me what's in it. No. It looks like a bear claw, kind oh. of, and it has apple in oh, it. Oh, that does sound good. I like apple. It's delicious. So... Oh, Yataro. Yataro uh -oh. is uh -oh. getting... Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Sticky bomb, firestorm, earth shock. Oh, he actually is fine. Okay. Yeah. Remnant didn't hit. I don't actually know if he would have died even if it did hit. I think he was going to be... That looked like... He was definitely going to die. Two for two split. So, uh, I love the Ursa pick. I think this was the best possible hero that Spirit had left in their arsenal. The Antimage got banned. They opted to not go for AA plus Void, which I thought they might do in the second oh, phase. Oh, round two? No. So there's a couple of upsides to this. It's a good late night matchup against Underlord. You have a hero that can kill Morphling from your carry position. And I think Ursa complements Lion really well in all stages of the game. It's someone that Lion can play with and assassinate cores, which so Lion loves to do this, but a lot of the time can't necessarily do it with many of the meta cores right now because they're off in the jungle farming. But Ursa would like to get involved a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, so that's one good thing. Ursa can also buy Diffusal Blade, as the panel talked about, which is a good item against the Morphling. So that's definitely good. As far as Aster goes, I think if Aster want to win a game, it's do or die. You put some mail on Void Spirit. Okay, that. well, right on cue. If they want to win the game, they can't die on Monet this early. That is, wow. I don't understand how he died to this lane, actually. That is insane. Um, must have caught him off guard. They don't even have Gush, so he can't really have been surprised. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know what uh, could have happened here, but maybe overestimated how much health he had or something. Maybe he was in the tree line where that Ward shows him, and he was full at a title. Oh, yeah, maybe he was morphing down. That's true. Uh, XXS, XXS getting chased. Here. Yeah, this is going to be a rough lane for him. Technical surprise number two is online. But Boca is actually in trouble as well here. He's going to get a sticky bomb down. And looks like he'll be able to walk mm. away. Yeah. Gitaro needs to farm, Cinderin. Siamese Cat It's going to get the tombstone down. He's just dying the to blood grenade as well, but yeah, he's just going to be casually right-click down as Mira will be the eventual trade. Takes a while, but Monet finally gets on the board. Finally puts Aster on the board, in fact. Sumail fighting Losing off against Laurel. Laurel for now. Yep, the so Spirit the, Brothers. Up. Last game, Laurel got absolutely trashed in lane by the Timber Saw. This time around, much better conditions for him. The Void Spirit matchup is clearly better for him. Yeah, we haven't really seen well. Void Spirit do... Very well since the nerf in the last mini patch. Letter patch. Uh, I feel like he accounts for Aster's only win since then. Maybe they've won two games, but it's like when I see Aster and Void Spirit, they win. And if they don't, it just hasn't looked as good. So Sumail definitely is pulling a lot of weight when he's playing this hero. And well, what better time to do it than in the elimination game? You've gotta pull out all the stops here if you wanna have a chance of going to Riyadh the direct way. I don't know how the math all boils down in the end when it comes to all the teams that get invited. It's something about average placement in the two seasons and whatnot. If you make top four in either season, I think you're very probably close to being an invite from that alone. Well, I don't tell, remember how good Astros was all. Tell Liquid that. Last one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. Take a harder route. It's, it's hard to tell right now, but. Uh... Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Marl kills Sumail. Oh, there's that Death Note. Wow. I mean, he is leading in the CS pretty dramatically. 21 and 2 to 13 and 3. So, Sumail not off to a good start this time, which means Aster are likely going to have to try and help him, which they do have heroes that can do that. The blast off from the techies being the main component. But I am glad that we're seeing Tidehunter again. This is a hero that just had not seen for a while, and then the last couple of weeks we've been seeing him as <laughs> playing as Cinder as always. <laughs> Let's keep it up. <laughs> really love seeing Undying every single game. Mira yeah. will get waveformed on by Monet. See, All right, so Mail they knew to... I was not wanting that. Yeah, it, you, it has to be genuine. So yeah. I said Samail has to come up big. He dies. You love Tide. He dies. Um, What's next? Oh, the good news for Collapse, he doesn't really miss any creeps, and he's going to get solo XP now, at least a little bit. Yep. Ah. And Anchor Smash, if you're able to get it off against Morphling early on, obviously a very valuable spell since he is mostly base no. damage. That's not yours. 
Interesting. Uh, I, I wonder what influences Ember Spirit's uh, skill builds in lanes like this. If Resonant Pulse makes it unappealing to max out the Slight. Because we have Ember matchups where Ember maxes Slight, and we have matchups where he maxes the Flame Guard. Maybe it's just because it's melee on melee, and you just get a, too much value out of having the Guard. But could definitely harass Samael quite a lot with points. Yep, Siamese Slight Cat's well. going to get destroyed. Monet wants revenge, but uh, it's not gonna that is it. a Tide Hunter. Although he does have Adaptive Maybe Strike coming back soon. Either attack. way, he's going to do <clears throat> pretty significant damage to both heroes. The Collapse is going to pull an entire wave, plus some additional creeps. Yeah, bottom link, definitely the, the best news for Astra in this game. Monet is doing very well for himself. Putting some good pressure, he has a full level advantage against the Tide. Whereas Samael in the mid not doing too hot in the top lane. It's going okay, considering it's Ursa against Underlord, but I imagine it's going to get harder and harder. Pichu trying to give some help mid here, but who is he really helping? Looks like Laurel will easily clean this one up. Wonder if... Yeah, he is level 6 as well. Tombstone's starting to be a problem, so... Samael with probably. that level disadvantage. Searing Chains connects. Mipochu is coming from the other side, which means Samael has to revert to the other side. But Tentacle Surprise catches him by... Well, surprise. surprise. We yeah. finish each other's... Sandwiches. Surprises. <laughs> Good one. You tried. But it was not sandwiches. Okay, well. Although, I guess if the sandwich had tomato, you would put that aside and... And you can eat that by I, yourself. I, I do like tomato, I have to say. It's it's good. Okay. And you do like sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Who doesn't? Just like a uh, heavy weapons guy. Yeah. It's a good character. Wait, did he just cancel the blast off? No. He did not send her in, in case you were wondering. Yep, I was wondering. Poshka. We'll go down to the casual right clicks, Boboka's rain. I mean, ever since they changed this hero to actually have damage, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty absurd. As the Aether Remnant catches Laurel, he's able to run it away, though. Yeah. Now he'll gonna just back, fill here. and he's fine. I but think yeah. that's, that's honestly the biggest difference between these two heroes in this matchup at this point in time, is that Ember can trade with Void Spirit, and they can burn each other down, and then Ember just gets a free refill. Yep. <laughs> so... Quite meaningful. He's just gonna come back to mid. Obviously, Samael didn't burn through everything he had, but... Wisdom Rune Exchange, one for one. Laurel is a thousand ahead of Samael after the second kill they got as well. Yeah, I mean, we've Three seen Samael get off to slow starts from time to time, but he's come back in a lot of these games because of the support. Yeah, and this but game... It is already seven and a half minutes, and they haven't really seen much in the mid lane. It's unlikely they find a way to kill Ember at this point, right? Yeah. Undying is not going to help much in the gank, so it needs to be techies plus void, and it's a very hard one to execute. If Ember is high on health and has flame guard ready, you don't have enough to get through it. Mm. It's like they might just try it regardless, but Boca has shown up. But Laurel has a good ward here, so if Boca gets close to the slope, Laurel will know. Well, 8-minute rune is spawning. Laurel hoping it's top. There's going to be a clash for it at bottom. It's and top. It will be top in Laurel. the shield rune. Laurel wants to fight. He's disarmed for the time being. Disarmed even more. I don't really have half HP. Has the remnant away, although Samael is going towards his remnant. Man, he is taking some ridiculous damage. Dodges the blast off. And did Sumail stop chasing? Yeah, he went for the line instead. Oh, that we'll is unfortunate. No, he won't. Not Pushka. yet, anyway. He will. Resonant wow. Pulse takes him out. And now Mira will be able to outrun the Sticky Bomb. That is reactive taser. Never yep. That is an ability on Boboka. Yes. Did you say something about that? No. <laughs> okay. Sometimes the observers are just curious about it. <laughs> I wonder what this is. <laughs> oh. yeah, I'm sure they have their reasons. Oh, Collapse. Lay. That's a lot of members of Asher. It's going to be the first Ravager of the game with the Meteor Hammer coming in as well. Siamese Cat trying to finish off Collapse, but they're not even going to be able to do that. Instead, Spirit will get two kills on both supports for Aster. Under attack. Awesome casting from Collapse there. The fact that he gets a two hero meteor hammer combo there is beautiful. Radiant both of them were on the edge of that. Under attack. And what do you think rabbit. of as XXS? I mean, being oh, no. left alone against Yator, this is a very bad matchup as oh, the panel talked about. 
Maybe he was afraid of a TP rotation or something, but... What do you think of the, the Meteor Hammer build that we've been seeing on Tide? Hold that thought. Remember that question, Cinder, and Siamese Cat's dead. Um, Radiance top tower is under I think attack. it's pretty good. As long as you're off to an okay start on Tide, it, you use it to take the tower, it accelerates your farm, you can get stacks easier. I I like it. It's a feels-good item on the hero in general. The region's nice. I mean, how many other people are playing Tide right now? It's at least two different people that have uh, the We've seen XXS get it as well, and... I'm trying to remember the last one. Um, Cure. Bought it as well for Bet. Yeah, that's right. I think it was XXS that went the squishy build, right? Yeah, that was he went the, very squishy. Media Hammer, Blink, Hex. Yes. And, and he couldn't withstand any damage. And Pure went Meteor Hammer, Blink, Pipe. Yeah. And he could withstand damage. Yes. It's funny how that works. Well, looks like he's learned his lesson. He's going Pipe next. What, what do you mean learned his lesson? He hasn't gone the other build. Huh? XXS? XXS is on the other team. Radiant structures yeah, that's right. Are fortified. Yeah. That's correct. Well, that was a test. Okay, so... Production here showing what they meant by reactive taser. You missed slight a fist when Techies is taser. Apparently. It got the disarm off on Laurel there. During slight of fist? I think if you I mean if you get disarmed before, right, then the slight Oh is the going. slight doesn't do anything, yeah. I mean Yeah, that makes sense. I mean we've talked about that before as well. Yeah. A little bit of a setup on Miposhka here, but Samel cannot commit into Radiant's this. Middle tower Too much counterplay. Attack. Mira's gonna steal resonant pulse. And as for Yatoro, quietly keeping up with the Morphling, closing in on Battle Fury. And Ursa with Battle Fury can pretty much keep up with Morphling's farming pace in the game in general. And I think in a one-to-one -one with how much value you get for net worth for these heroes, not a bad match for the Ursa in general. Damn, that's really fast, though. <laughs> yeah, he's not smart. quite done with it, but he has. it's not like a naked Battle Fury or anything. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Wraith Band treads as Sumailcat taking... Some damage from Sumail. Here comes the Fiend's Gate. They have the Impale. The of Malice is there, though, to help out from XXS. Top tower so the Lion will tower. perish first. Big rotation for that, but... Uh, XXS thinking twice Radiance about going through the gate. He fallen. knows that <laughs> Ursa might be waiting for him. Yeah. And yeah, this, this rotation is actually not really that good. That you kill the Lion, but you don't Radiance get any cores. Sumail expends a lot of resources. You use Underlord ulti and you almost lose your top tower. So that didn't really work out the way they had hoped, I think. Aster would have loved to get more than just a line out of that. Bounty. Oh, Laura, there's no way he can get this by himself, surely. Boboka's here to help out Sumail, slide a fist, and away he goes. Getting relatively close to the Maelstrom. I love watching Undying's, it's just never have mana. Decay on Decay action. Yeah, gush into death, and now the tier one tower, both top and mid, might be going down in favor of Spirit. And Yatoro does get that, and do they actually want to fight this? He's already oh, used in Rage. Hey, death. Astral Step is there. Sticky Bomb as well. He's done for. Just picked up his Battle Fury, so doesn't really lose much gold. It's such a funny undying kill before this. He had plus 12 strength and minus 12 strength. <laughs> it been decayed an even amount. Mira just, him just kept trading decays, and you're like, you feel tanky as undying, but not really in that situation. But Kill on Yotaro's big. They really need something going their way for Aster here, and finding that Ursa and slowing him down will allow Monet to hopefully overtake him again. Progress toward... What I'm curious to see what itemization he's going to go because Lincoln's against Lion is usually a feels good item. It forces him to use Mana Drain first and then Hex and then Earth Spike and makes it a little bit harder for him to set it up. It also means you can't get opened by Telekinesis without blocking the Fade Bolt. But against Ursa, the Lincoln's doesn't really do anything. So, I suppose if Ursa goes to Fusal, you block that, but eh, it's not the greatest. And we'll see how it works out. Radiant are scanning. You don't want that morph or that attribute shift being stolen by Rubik. I guess. He just needs to get it one time though. Yep, true. Um So that's all tier one towers down for Aster. Right, took bottom, then he went to mid. 
Ursa got the tough one. Boboka and Carl finds himself a Boboka. Forces out the Pit of Malice. A subtle burn. It looks like Collapse wants to fight. He's got the cloak, so he's a bit tankier. And you can see the old pop by Saimei's captain is going to turn into a good old fashioned team fight. Sumail with a big astral step. Laurel is going to be helped out by Collapse's huge ravage. And Laurel able to reset, but Monet's on the other side to finish him off. Sumail will follow suit, so it's a one for one from each respective mid. Collapse now getting chased down. Nice and pale from Maposhka, but will not save the watermelon, man. It looks like Mira might be next. We have three tentacle surprises in this game, with Monet being the other Leon. And crucial there for Astros to have the numbers advantage. That looked like a really good Ravage hammer combo, but they didn't have enough damage in the tank. With Ember dying and getting pressured as early as he did, he couldn't take full advantage. While Yatoro is doing a great job keeping up that farm, this Monet joining that fight was crucial for Astro to more or less level up the or even out the game. Yep, I think it was around 3k at that time, so pretty decent shift. Ursa picking up the dagger. Curious to see what the Yatoro's idea is here. If he has a specific target in mind. Is his job to just jump in and blast the techies during a stun? Is it to try to kill on dying fast? Oh, Sumail! Oh! That's a good remnant. Oh, that's a close. Cutting it close. Dodging the chains there. Uh, Monet, he gets the attribute shift off. Fury Swipe starting to stack up. XXS has come. Nice blast out from the Boca. Get the disarm onto two. They're focusing down the tombstone, but now regret their decisions as the bear is on the run. Sticky Bomb slows him to a crawl. That'll be the end of him. And Maposhka able to walk that off, though, as Laurel has come now. Gonna find two members of Astro. He's gonna take a waveform to the face, but able to remnant out of the pit. Well, collapse is farming. <laughs> Dyer's top tower. After all that, only one dead, but now some major pressure this tier one. Money changes hands. Triple Dyer's bounty rune found by Miposhka, minute 16. Perfectly normal. Nice little influx of gold here for the Dyer. They'll lose their tower. And Astra have leveled the game now. Oh. The hack initiation, telekinesis into the impale, searing chains. Do they have the finish? Yes. Just enough damage, almost not Very enough. Very close. I mean, Poshka didn't have mana for the finger there. Yeah. Would have been nice to get that it charge up. Did the monster math and they got it done, but it's going to cost them Roche. Yes. Aegis will be going. In all likelihood, to Monet. It's very important Radiant's to have Aegis on Morph this game. You're not safe attack. against Lion Ursa. Second life will make things a lot easier. So 2k lead for Team Spirit. But this time around, they do not have the Antimage against Morphling matchup. Back that's the normal. Two, that's the 2k lead there. Yeah, Collapse has the full pipe and actually going for Greaves. Yep. So not opting for a blink. I mean, they do have blink on Toro as he's going to get caught a bit here and take some damage. Oh, Monet, does he actually want to fight this? Anchor Smash going to reduce his damage pretty massively. Can't kill him at all. This is really good from Collapse. He's buying time for his team. And if they do commit for this push, Aster needs to be careful. Radiance Middle Tower is under Your attack. Hammer. Oh, they see him. Yep, they want to go further. But nice and pale from Maposhka on the sideline, but Collapse is so slow. He does have the Ravage, but will he have the follow-up if he has to use it? Pops the pipe. Actually, that's XXS popping the pipe. Collapse is taking too much damage. Spirit Bear weren't interested. Numbers, exactly. The Toro's off farming. Laurel is pushing mid. The idea there was that Collapse could delay this push as much as possible, and he did his darndest, but the tower will fall in a moment. Dyer's no glyph. Monet will take it down. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. That's a big steal. Firestorm Dyer's is very tower. good. It's huh? S tier on this hero. S tier? Yes. It's incredible this one. I mean, I knew it was really good. You have I figured Fissure would be S tier. That is also S tier. Okay. They just. 
you have so much damage with the spell amp on the spell. It's crazy. Like, let's say you catch Morph and he starts attribute shifting. This spell is going to deal hundreds upon hundreds of damage every wave. Because his max HP goes up so much. Mm -hmm. So, very, very strong. And if they don't have much health, just the initial waves with spell amp also hurt. So, very good for killing Morph, very good for killing the Underlord himself. Rubik, a classic counter pick for Underlord for that specific reason. Stealing Firestorm is just that good. And alternatively, st stealing Pit of Malice is not bad either, because the, the root lasts really long on Rubik as well. So, loves to play against this hero. Look at you love Look at this that, my Mid boys. Game. Yeah, they're ready for it. Objective-based gaming. Unfortunately, Vapochka gets it. Well, you can want to drain away some Morph Mantas. Yeah, it's, it's not actually too terrible. I just hate Lion. You know that. It's a personal that. vendetta. Yeah. I would agree, though. The Rubik one's probably better. It's a really good save against oh, Pit of Malice. We talked about this. I said it was, what, 80-20 for Rubik to get it. Mm. Built-in RNG, so... Yeah, we'll pay close attention to that in future Rubik games. <laughs> so Not far, confirmation bias. very surprisingly, it's been about 50-50 in my experience, but I'm sure with some more sample, <laughs> this will be pushed in the 80-20 direction. <laughs> Just give it enough games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just been very unlucky yeah. to have it even. <laughs> Firestorm just clearing a full. What do you think oh, of so good. as we have? Oh my, don't die, Baboka. This shard goes to Baboka. That one's pretty good, too. Yeah, taser for allies. I guess it's mainly good to put on both morph and void. It's pretty good on undying, too. Give him move speed so he can get in and hit with flesh golem and disarm people when they turn around on him. Not then again, bad. you want the grab ally. Let's be real. That's true. I think grab ally would probably be grab ally this game. Very good. Against Ravage and whatnot, if you're able to get it down. Yeah, that's the thing that you could argue is that Ravage is actually a kind of decent solution against it if that comes before the tomb, because yeah. it's likely going to clip the Undying as well when you're going for your primary kill. Mira will he not did. survive this. Dyer's Blasted to smithereens. And this is a mid tower for Aster, making some nice progress around the map. Yeah. Might cost the next oh, fast yes. No, they cannot come in. Gonna dispel your Toro's overpower. Yeah, he's stuck inside. This Pit of Malice now has to kind of just fight his way through. Give me two times the BKB TP. Nice pickup though. The Yules definitely kind of. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's a nice solution to Ursa before he gets the BKB off. Did force a triple TP there, at the very least, with that. Pressure play onto XXS, so that always sets up the map a little bit. That's it. That's true. They can still connect to top together with that if they want to. But it looks like XXS will be playing isolated most of the time. So it will only be able to one man gate, not bring the team there. The rest of them will just make their own move, so then it's not a problem. Smoke is up. Aegis is gone, though. So this was perhaps a missed opportunity. This move one minute ago would have felt a lot stronger. If he can find anything here. Not so far. They're hoping someone will walk in and spring the trap, but Spirit are wisely playing around each other in mid and they will make their own smoke move. It'll break instantly though. Yep, instant hex though onto Sumail. He gets impaled. Well, he looks to be perfectly fine after that pipe is pop. Collapse is the one that's completely surrounded. Hit him out on him. He's gonna use the ravage. The Toro jumps in focusing on the board. One able to waveform away. Laurel and company looking to back and potentially reset. Knowing that that Ravage is down though, although you fire Dwarf very low on HP, Steering Chains catches Sumail. You can see Ataro jumps back in with the P BKB. He didn't even use that in that fight apparently. He must have been a cooldown still. They're able to clean him up. Uh, Spirits seem a little bit unsure what they want to do here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting usage there, Collapse. Anticipating the waveform, but it didn't come out. <laughs> Gonna have to get a replay of that pretty soon as the gush is there on the XX. No, what is happening? He's just in very a weird fight. Oh, but in the end, really here gets two kills. Yeah, both teams a bit unsure what they wanted to do there. So first Spirit were dancing around a little bit, some going in, some not, and then it was Aster's turn to send in their Underlord alone and just have him killed off. Not done yet. I'm dying oh, dead. His tombstone will follow. Oh, blast off comes in, but it's on the enraged Yatoro. He kind of shrugs it off, and now they're turning their sights onto War. Oh, they're going to get the Morph Link. They do. Three, Triple kill for Mira. Aster fight 
despite being way down in numbers. And they initiated on an enraged Ursa. My goodness. I think they were hoping to catch him off guard Radiant and not get the enrage off, but Yotaro was ready and that was just bait. His team were all gonna, gonna follow up on that. So if he doesn't die in the initial burst, this is a total disaster. And yeah, so this situation here, Monet is lucky to live in the first place here. This is so close. Mm. Oh, one more hit would have done it, but he does get the reset. And this fight just took forever. Weaving in and out, but ultimately, Spirit maybe a little bit more on the same page with what they wanted to do when XXS got kind of isolated and stuck up on the high ground alone. All right, watch collapse here, everybody. This is why this is so extended. Three. Two, and I was like, we want to go? No, we don't want to go. And, and Astro, like, we want to go. Now. With anticipating my platform. teammates. <laughs> this would actually have been a good hammer, but he got slight chained by Ember. I think Monet would have waveformed there. So I like that in anticipation <laughs> for collapse. Good attempt. I mean, that would have been <laughs> really sick if it worked. Roche up in a minute, 40 seconds. And as always, these teams have. No idea that that's the case, so they will occupy this side of the map for the foreseeable future because it is not daytime for quite a while. Feels like it's. Doesn't it feel like Roche, when people are taking, is like 80% of the time up top? Is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> you love your 80 20s, don't you? I but bet it's 50 like, 50. I like, bet it's, it's probably 50 50. Come on, Cinder. You've been casting with me the past two weeks. All right, so I will say there's a good chance it gets killed more on the top side, and there's two reasons for that. First of all, it's night which the team that is attacking Roche might draw advantage from that with information. And the second thing is just, you know, if you look at the timing of when it turns day to night, maybe it just lines up better, right? The first time you can kill Roche, around 15 minutes, and then the second time around 25. Yeah. It kind of checks out, so. 80-20, yeah. like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be so funny if we had a stat on that on hand right now, and it's 50-50. Or 80-20 for Radiant, that would be even better. Yeah. Come on. That's definitely not the case. Fake though. news. 9k lead for Team Spirit. If Aster fail this fight, I think this lead is going to become insurmountable. The Mayo! Oh boy, he gets insta gibbed My goodness! He cannot be alone in front there with no coverage. They don't have vision. Yeah, don't Boboka, know. he's found as well. Collapse, he's just waddling in. Still has the Ravage available. He's taking tons of damage from this Firestorm. We'll pop the pipe though. This hit him out. It's really nice though. Waiting for opportunity though. here. And they're still not buying back on Sumail. His Roche is now up. Aster, if they overextend now, they don't have Tombstone out here and they don't have their mid. Like, this play does not exist. I mean, they know that they can't take it in 15 seconds, so I think Sumail can just safely come back. But they're not going to have Tombstone. Ravage is still there. Roche is just sniffing outside his pit, making sure nothing crazy is going on. He's like, all right, everything's normal. No Tombstone for this fight. Now the Fury Swipes have come for Roche. Sticky Bomb for some information. XXS with a Firestorm collapse. Nice zoning uh, Meteor Hammer. Stolen Firestorm for the pit fight. Very nice here from Mira as well. Yeah, true. Yeah, this, they're gonna smoke up now. I like this play. Drawing a very big circle here, collapse. I don't think they're gonna go that far around. Well, we'll see. I mean, this would be... Oh, he's the one with the Blink Dagger, remember. He's gonna show himself in the lane. Gives away some information. Laurel looking for Sumail again. Sticky Bomb not going to find a connection. Lotus Flower still sitting in the fountain. Nobody's interested, though. Radiance Courier has been killed. Firestorm stolen again. Radiant's top As the Scotty, I believe, is being delivered right now to Yatoro. Oh, he has it already. XXS is in trouble. Time to show it off. XXS deleted. Monet pops the BKB. There's the Ravage. Only going to clip one. And it's just the Undying buyback now from XXS. As the Tombstone goes down pretty much right off the bat. Baboka with the initiation only clipping Mapochka, though. And XXS, if they can get this, this will be a dieback. Now they're focusing it with the Bear. Fury's quest continue. He's dead. Dieback for the Underlord. So Mayo trying to go through the Fiend's Gate with all his might, but he does not get there in time. Does have buyback, but there's oh. no way as Baboka just barely gets out. No way they're going to buy back for this, knowing that Underlord cannot participate. So Roche, finally, Another will go to Spirit. Another gold as well for Spirit there. That's a dieback on the Underlord. 
I went from 9 to 14 and going to 15 with this. And if they want, they can sweep through the jungle and get a couple of bounties as well, so probably make that 16k. And this is just the poke and pawn, and this is why Ursa is so good against Underlord together with the stunners that he has on his team. At some point, there's going to be a moment of opportunity, and I love how Yator has been playing this game, just patiently waiting, letting the poke commence, letting the firestorm do its job, and then when heroes drop to half health, that's when he pounces in, and here again, Underlord trying his best to survive, but it's just not enough. Samel with his escape plan. Oh, so close. Oh, my goodness. Might make it out. That shook hell. Collapse is SMHing his head. Top tower is <laughs> In joy. 16k lead for Team Spirit. Massive advantage. Wisdom. With the bounties. Does Popoka not want the wisdom? Didn't he see it? It's just hiding his time. You know this is not gonna go anywhere. Maybe he thought they were fading. Pretty late wisdom, right? We'll get it. Setting up some mines here. Marl. Oh. Okay, Boboka's gone. Tier 2 tower will fall in favor of Spirit. Radiance middle tower. Aegis and Cheese on the Toro. Radiance middle and he, looks like he's going for a Lincolns, actually. We'll turn this time. We'll block to the our Yules, advantage. which has been kind of annoying for him. And obviously, the, does Morph have Axe? Axe actually isn't very good against Ursa, right? Because of the overpower. Radiance I would say it's definitely one of the worst carry matchups because Ursa doesn't need his attack speed nearly as much as other Agicores. Which is another part of why this matchup is good for Ursa. Toro jumps in. That's not going to happen. Yeah, he gets Yules. Doesn't have that Lincolns yet. Pops the Enrage. Nice double searing chains there. It looks like Spirit is going to easily get this tower, although the fortifications pop to delay. They're not going to kill the Siege Crypt with it, though. I think maybe they will barely. Okay, they will. Last volley. And I think they still get the tower. And Yatoro wants to jump back in, but Boca just barely lives, but the Slight of Fist is too much, and Mira with the Fade Bolt. But they do get the Aegis in turn, that's an, again, very early usage. So Spirit will get the tower. Enrage was pop. Oh, there's a possible ravage. He was thinking about it. Oh, Lapsy no faking it out. It's a lot harder. Grab ally available. In anticipation of this, he's gonna use it. Grab ally on the Undying himself, but he will not live through the slight. Laurel just a constant nuisance to this Aster squad. And it looks like Spirit will get a set of racks. Radiance and I don't see what's stopping them from going mid. They have everything. They have well, Beyond. not Aegis. No, but they have everything else. They have Radiance Ravage. Boxing. They have Cheese on your Toro. There's no Tombstone. There's no Undying. Yeah, oh, going no. back in. Going back in. Collapse oh, no. with the Ravage into the Meteor Hammer. Actually, not that much damage done. Oh, it was a little underwhelming, but you can see Samael taking the brunt of the damage now as Maposhka blows him up. And now XXS in the cover of his base, but going to need a lot more cover than that. Renee, he pops the BKB kind of early. And that's a big big item down. And I think you're right. The Spirit can just continue on. They have very low cooldown. Stuff other than that Ravage, which doesn't seem like they even need. Master going to smoke. This is a desperation move. They need to find something here. But they're three on five, so it doesn't really seem feasible to go in. The spirit can easily cover for themselves. Got another tower down. Tombstone still there. With the grab ally available. Which Boboka was using apparently. <laughs> Pops right out. Is under attack. What is Tidehunter going for with that Vit booster? Hmm. Oh my god. He has a heart. Well then. Holy cow. Okay, Collapse. We see you, buddy. Yeah. Gonna take more damage from Firestorm, but he's gonna tank everything. So it shouldn't matter. Aeon just picked up so many luxury items coming out now. Miposhka with that. It's not going to be an instant snipe for Samael and company. Doesn't have it on himself just yet. It's slower than average, though. Uh, it's because the average is based on one match. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably collapsed. <laughs> 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 
Tara really wants to kill the Tombstone, but it's not going to happen. Turns his sight to Monet instead. Lincoln does pop, pops the BKB thereafter. Sumail, he's really low. The telekinesis into the finger, and he just dies. Oh, my. That is not what you want to see if you're an Aster fan. Now, Spirit are looking to finish this game. Sumail with no buyback available. They have so much damage from afar. Like, they don't even need to invest very much to get these kills. And Spirit, overall, they get three kills. And GG's called. It's over. Master bow down. Back out of the game. Throwing the towel. And that's the end of them in this tournament. They obviously still have two series to go, but with yeah. this.